Over 60 feet of track, this is the biggest scale electric build we've ever done, and we have done a big scale electric build before. But this one is a digital track, so it races four cars at any one time. We've added buildings, we've added mountains, we've added loads of detail to this. We've got a long straight, we've got a figure of eight, we've got some different levels, and it is pretty epic to be fair. And it took flipping ages to build. The longest part though was getting that layout sorted, as we all know. Let me show you. Right, so I think I'm happy with this layout. Me and Matt have been at this for a couple of hours trying to get something sorted. I'm pretty happy with what it looks like now, but let's get it on the tables and then I'll talk you through it. Right, so that is the layout sorted. We've got it up on tables and it is much easier to work with at this kind of like waist height, much better. We've got it split into three large panels. They're a meter by 1.8 meters, and that's gonna allow us to get it in the van to take it where we wanna take it to, but more on that later. So what we've got is we've got a classic like long straight and then hairpin over here, which we wanted in this track. With our last track, it was all a bit widdly diddly. We didn't really have any long straights. So we wanted to correct that in this version. We've also got one of our digital crossovers here, which I'm quite excited to test out and use because that is the big upgrade on this track over and above the first version we did. If the car flies off, it doesn't matter which track you put it back on because obviously it's a digital one. So the car's powered whichever track it's on. Moving over here, we've got a classic kind of rise second level. I'm really loving how we've got this whole kind of looping section, which then follows on to this figure of eight. That is the classic track, isn't it? If you had a scale electric set as a kid, you probably had a figure of eight set, didn't you? So we wanted to incorporate that too. We've tested it already. It does work. However, it's all a bit loosey goosey at the minute. It's hanging over the edge of the tables. Right now, all we've got is sheets of foam resting on the fold out tables, which is not ideal. So the plan is to mount these sheets of foam to a wooden backer to make them a lot more stout. We're also gonna put some rails on the back of the boards to make sure that they locate on the tables and they're fixed in the right spot. We're also gonna add some latches to make sure that those three boards are gonna to clip together and it's not gonna move. So that should be all part of the next montage. So let me go and cut all the wood down, get it all attached, get it on the tables and get all the foam cut so we have a really great solid blank surface to get this scale electric set fully dialed in and then we can give it a proper test. So there we go, that is the table all built. I'm really happy with it. It's solid, it's not going anywhere. And just to talk you through exactly how we've built this, we've used 11 mil sheets of OSB, which I love. We've used it everywhere in the makerspace. And we've cut them down to 1.8 meter lengths by a meter wide. And then we've added latches on the two ends here and then on the two ends here. And that means that we can put the sheets of OSB onto the folding tables and then latch them together so they're perfectly square. We've then added three by two rails underneath either side of the tabletop. And that just means that if you lean on the table here, it can't slide off the folding table. They are all snugly held in place. We've added rails on the back and the front of this one and on the side. We've added a rail on the back of that one on the side, on the back here. So it literally, you lean on this table anywhere and it's not going anywhere. So I'm really pleased with that. That is a great base for our scale electric build. We've then added the foam on top and we've got our 50 mil green. We will be gluing it to the boards and we'll be screwing it as well. But what we'll be doing first is laying all the track out now, cutting the track into the foam, and then we can put the screws underneath the track so they'll be fully hidden. Now onto the fun bit, which is getting this track set up properly. Now we've got a proper level surface. Get the track built up, we can test it properly now, make sure we're happy with the layout, and then get it cut into the foam. Right, so we've moved the track over to the maker space because it was right in the way. We'd built it in the middle of production over the weekend and it couldn't stay there, so we've had to move it over here. It's working, which is the main thing. If you've built scale electric track, you know every time you take it apart, you're taking your fate in your hands, really. It might never work again, but it's working over here, which is fantastic. It's looking a bit boring, though. We've definitely got to add 
a little bit more visual interest to this track, make it look a bit better. And the other thing we've got to do is sort out some cars, because this being a digital track, all the cars we had from the last build, which we've got loads of them, none of them are digital. But we don't want to just digitize any cars, we want to digitize these two. Comment below if you recognize these. You've got to recognize this fella, and possibly that one, depending what area you're from. Why these two cars? Well, this track is going to be going to Maker Central this year. Maker Central is a really cool show at the NEC. We've been for the last couple of years, and we're going to take this down there for the attendees to have a race on. But we want to use these two cars because Nick Zametti, who organises the show, has these two cars. And the last couple of years we've been there, these have been at pride of place at the front. And that's why we want to get these cars running on this track. And as far as I can tell, it's quite easy to upgrade these to digital versions as they come brand new in the box. So I've picked up a couple of these Scale Trick digital plugs. Now these go in the bottom of standard slot cars if they've got the little hatch and you can upgrade them to digital. So that way they'll work with this track. Now the DeLorean and the Knight Rider both need this upgrade. So I'm gonna show you how to do it in three quick steps. So the first thing is check your car can be upgraded or it might actually be digital already. Now if it's got this little square box, it can be upgraded. If it's just got a little LED there, that means it's already digital. But for our cars, we've got the little box. So we're gonna unscrew that panel, disconnect the plug inside, plug in the new digital chip, screw it back on. And that is as simple as that. That is now ready to go. That's where this pile of goodies comes in. So we've gone for all Scalex Trick official kind of accessories here because they're all at the right scale. They all fit. We've gone for three of these grandstands. Now these are pretty cool looking and they kind of clip under the track. So they're going to make it look quite seamless, hopefully. We've gone for two of these control towers, which are like three stories tall. So they should give us a bit more height to the build. And then we've got a couple of the garages as well. So that's really good. We've also got another one of these bridges. Now, if you remember, or if you've watched our first scale electric build, go and watch that if you've missed it. The whole build we sent down to a youth center down south and they're loving it. But we did keep this one little bit of the track as a little bit of a memento from it. And we've got the new bridge to go with it. So now we'll have a two bridge. That's We're upgrading this track in every way. So two bridges, dual bridges. So we've got all the accessories. Let's get them all built and let's get them installed. Right, so that's all the buildings done. They look really good. They had a lot of visual detail and a lot of height to the build, which I'm really pleased with. And a quick shout out to Witness Model Center. We were able to get some last minute track to really finish off this build. So thanks to those guys. All we've got to do now is cut all the track into the foam so we don't forget the layout. And then we've got to glue and screw all of the sheets of foam onto the boards so we can then take it apart. So let's get that sorted. So that's it all glued and screwed down to the board, which has enabled us to move it back here to Shadow Foam, which is great. That's the whole point of this modular system that we can move easily. So we've set it up here and it's looking great. The track's all built, it's all tested again, but it's time to add some details to this build. So we're gonna cut some cars in around the track to make it a bit more vibrant than just green and black. We've got to cut in the buildings into their positions. And we're also gonna add some black foam because over here on the figure of eight section, We've got a load of cars around. It'd look better if it looked a bit like tarmac. So we're gonna add some black foam there. We're gonna add some black foam under these buildings. 
which will hopefully tie those in a bit better. We're also going to take away these temporary spaces that I've put in to like hold the track up and we're going to put in some black foam there and make it look a little bit like rock. And hopefully I can bring that up a little bit above the track line to function as a bit of a barrier because we've got a few little points here where we know cars are going to go flying, which we want to avoid because we want the cars to last more than five minutes. So a few extra organic kind of barriers are going to be a benefit and that should give us the completed build. So let's get to it. So there we have it, that is the build complete and we've added heaps more detail to it. We've really gone to town. This is a massive upgrade from that first scale electric set we did. So let me go through all of the upgrades we've added pretty much since we screwed the track down and screwed the foam down to the board. So let me start over here. We've cut the centers out of the figure of eight so we can replace that green foam with some black foam. We've also put in some deeper foam there to kind of lift it up and give it a bit more depth and that looks a lot better. We've then used a heat gun around it to get a nice clean edge on it, so that's really good. We've cut the cars in and peeled back one layer so we know where they all live, and we've done the same with the bridge. So it's gonna be dead easy to break it down and then put all the pieces back, which is great. We've also done the same over here. We've cut this section out of the figure of eight and we've replaced that with a bit of taller black material. We've then cut the buildings into the foam as well as the cars, and we've added some stickers to this setup so it looks a lot better. This corner is great. The biggest change though is these two. We've added some mountains. Now these work as crash barriers, but also add a lot more height and depth to it, and they are removable. So basically we've glued together three 70 mil pieces of shadow foam, just with some of our spray adhesive. Once it's all bonded, I've then carved it with a knife, basically. I've just carved it, carved it, got it into the rough shape I wanted, and then used the heat gun to go over the top of it and mold it or melt it into this much more organic mountain shape. I've then put it on the foam, cut around it, peeled back some layers, and that's created a really nice home for it and it kind of helps bond the two layers together as well, covers up one of the seams. And we've done the exact same with this small little back mountain. Just on that back corner there where we can't have a crash barrier, we've now got a mountain which is gonna stop the cars flying off the track. Moving over here, this is where it gets a little bit more complicated because we've used the same technique as these mountains, but over here we've had to mold the road into the foam. You might remember temporarily, we had some bits of foam just propping up the track, which is not what we wanted long term. So use the same technique, put some black foam under here. We've kind of sculpted this mound so it kind of flows down to the rest of the table, but we've lifted it up here for a bit of a mountain, a crash barrier the same. We've got the track resting on the foam now, so we don't need any dodgy supports. It's all properly supported. A few other little details, we've added a police car over here. This is a scale electric police car we had from the first build. So that's a little bit of scenery. He's watching out for anything that's happened. And you might have spotted this little crash. He's just witnessed this. An Audi flew off the road straight in that pond there. And this pond is two purposes. It looks better, adds a bit of detail in this like kind of plain spot, but it also works like a dovetail. You plan to slot a pond in there. We slotted a pond in there and it helps pull together those two pieces of foam, which is great. Over here, we've got this looping section, which goes around these three buildings, which again, are cut into the foam. We've got a helicopter on the top, which is sat on some foam as well. And we've got these little, well, there are loads of little details which just make this track a lot more interesting to look at. Over here, this is probably the most amount of work I had to do, sculpting this badger. So essentially, that's beginner, that's novice, this is expert level foam sculpting. Because we've had to glue all the layers, get the track perfectly cut in so it flows downhill, because we want it fully supported. But then we've also got a bit of a stone here, a bit of stone at the back to help it just look like it's carved out of rock. We've added the Hollywood sign, Believe it or not, they are just candles. They came from Clinton Cards in, in our local town, Northwich. I think they were at 50p, 40p each. So pretty cheap to get a couple of letters there. Looks like a Hollywood sign. Shout out to Matt, that was your idea. Love it, Matt. Flowing around, we've now got all of the kind of flat section and we've got our power 
base here, we've got our triggers cut into the foam. We've got all of these kind of seating areas all now cut into the foam with the logos on, they look a lot better. We've got the shadow foam logo cut in there. This section of black here was the exact same technique we've used over there, except for rather than cutting in a deeper piece of foam or a higher piece of foam, we've cut a 30 mil sheet in there with a red below it, black above it, so we can cut through the foam, show that logo through. Great little bit of detail and I'm really pleased with that. All we've got to do now, give it a test because every time you take this thing apart, it breaks because that's how Scale Electric works. So we'll make sure it all still works and then we're going to break it down and take it to the NEC because we are heading to Maker Central this weekend. It's the 13th and 14th of May. We're going to be having this on the stand and if you want to race it, come and have a look. Take advantage of the show offer we've got. We've got a huge discount for all the attendees of the show. We've got some great offers running this weekend and every person who orders some Shadow Foam or if you've ordered Shadow Foam in the past and you show us one of your projects, we're going to let you race on this track, log a fastest lap, exactly like Top Gear. We're going to have a board there. If you're the fastest time, you're going to win an epic prize. And when I say epic, I mean epic. Check this out. So I hope you enjoyed this video and this build. It was probably our biggest project we've ever done on Shadow Foam. There's a lot of time that's gone into getting this as epic as we could get it, because obviously we're taking it to the show. We want everyone to love it. If you've got any ideas on how we could have made this better, please let us know. I'd love to hear them. We had loads of ideas come from our last scale electric build. And if you've not watched that, go and check it out here. And obviously show that one some love. Give this one a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And then we'll know to do another one and maybe go even bigger and even better. So I read all the comments. I'd love to hear what you think of this track. Thanks for watching the video. Make sure you subscribe, click the bell icon so you don't miss our next epic scale electric build. And we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. If you like that video, why not check out some of our others? We've got new videos coming out every week. And Colin Furs, what's the quickest way for people to see these videos? That's subscribe. It.